All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope you can hear me okay, those online. All right. Okay, welcome to this session. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. So I'd like to leave it open. Anyone would like to pray? Francis can pray. Thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful life. Lord Jesus, we are coming before the name, Father. Lord, we thank you for everything you are doing in our life. Spirit, we are giving this section to your hand. Lord Jesus, teach us new things. Help the pastor to teach us, Lord. We are giving all glory to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Okay, so uh, last class, I know that most of you uh, are in-person students also attended online. Um, but let's get into our next portion. Uh, for that, let me just share the notes. Okay. So last class, we did quite a few, uh, you know, uh, sections in this. We talked about career growth, right? We talked about how, uh, as professionals, uh, and not only in the corporate, but wherever we are, we want to see ourselves growing, right? And we looked at a few uh, pointers. You can enjoy the rewards of your work. Promotion comes from the Lord. You know, you may have a good boss. You may have a bad boss. Uh, remember that promotion comes from the Lord. Excellence will be rewarded. We talked about a little bit about Daniel and how uh, he had an excellent spirit. And uh, that's how he was. Uh, he continued to be the governor over three kings. Uh, walk in wisdom, because wisdom opens doors. Have a sincere heart uh, in everything that you do. Now, the more that is given to you in leadership, the more you have to deliver. So it's not like, okay, the higher I go, the easier life will become. Not at all. The higher you go, the more you have to deliver, right? Uh, be patient as you transition through employment. So there will be times when uh, we may go through a phase of unemployment. So be patient. Ask God. Uh, to open the right doors, trust God uh, during this phase. It's very easy to lose hope. It's very easy to get into, you know, because our mind, now I'm sure we've heard of this saying, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. So when our mind is idle, we don't have anything to do. It's very easy for the enemy to uh, take a foothold, right? So you've got to be uh, trusting in God, holding on to his promises. Then you look ahead as, you know, God opens doors and you get a new job, right? Uh, now, let's get into the next portion, which is work-life balance. Work-life balance is a very important aspect, when, especially when we look at you know, life now, right? Um, in a time and in a season where you know, work has become the number one priority, earning money has become a number one priority in people's lives. Right? But the Bible teaches us, and Jesus himself, through his earthly ministry, taught us that we are called to live a good balance. We need to balance our life out. We cannot say only work. We cannot say only family. We cannot say only God. And I'll explain why you can't do that. Right. Uh, so there's this, this, this indicator. If you look at your notes, uh, that's your personal check. So. Uh, you can probably mark yourself there whenever, if you have time. You can, uh, as as of now, most of you are students, so uh, not really, you know, a work-life balance that you have right now. But over time, once you uh, get a job, you get into your probably even ministry, uh, it's very important to maintain a balance, right? Why is a balance important? Why do you think balance is important? To perform better, sorry? Otherwise, we'll fall or otherwise, we'll fail, right? What else? What do you think? Mm. For life to go in a smooth way, yeah, right? So, I think balance is very important because when we balance our life, we know how to. Uh, you know, how to walk in this life. We understand, okay, that there are many aspects in life. It's not like, you know, we just, you've seen the horse, you know, when the horse has its eyes covered, it just looks straight. Uh, but it's very important to understand that in life, 
there are many aspects that we must take care of. We must be involved in. Right? And I'll give you some examples even as we go ahead. So let's look at a few practical recommendations from scripture on how to balance our life. Right? Remember that work has a lot of pressure, it has a lot of demands. Right? And then you may have a family at home and you have your own personal health. If your health is not good, what can we work? Nothing we can do. Right? So I can't keep saying only work and you know don't look after my health. Or I can't say only health and don't look after my family and work. So there's so many things involved, right? So let's look at a few um, practical recommendations. Number one, maintain the rhythm of worship, work, and rest. Very important. Exodus 20, 8 through 10. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Work six days and do everything you need to do. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day. Sabbath to God, your God. Don't do any work. And this is, uh, there's a reason why God did this. If you look at even Genesis, God rested. Did he need rest? God's not a man that he needed rest. But there's a reason why that is even mentioned in the Bible. Right? Even here, God is saying to the Israelites, you have six days. Work all you can, do all you have to do. Those six days, but on the seventh day, do not work. Keep it holy. So if you read on in the book of Exodus, some of them went out and you know brought some manna on the Sabbath day. What happened? It it didn't even last for a few, you know, for a few hours. It just started to smell. Why? Because God said, Don't work on the Sabbath day. The principle is not about you know, uh, you shouldn't work. The principle is lay aside the day for God. Six days, you're working. But on the seventh day, make sure you rest and you have time for God. So God commanded us to worship, work, and rest. And we need to balance this out. Uh, this, this, this again, you remember that syndrome we talked about? You avoid the donkey and the horse syndrome. We forgot about it. What does the donkey do? It doesn't move. It's there in the same place. And what about the horse? It wants to keep running ahead. So we talked about that, avoiding that. So we avoid extreme laziness. We avoid overworking. Right? So we bring it all together. Now, of course, there are times, right? So, for example, in a couple of months, I think it's what, May, short-term Bible college is going to start. So now we know. Like, like I know. Okay, so short-term Bible is going to start. It's going to be a constant teaching, right? So we will have teaching, and then we also have other things to do. So it's the, that two months is a time of extra, you, know, you put in extra work. But then also understand that, I need to understand that, okay, April, May is the summer vacation for the children. Now, I can't keep saying, you know, this is there, that is there, that event is there, this event is there. I've got to make time for my children. Otherwise, my, my children will go to school and then the friends will ask, hey, what did you do? And nothing. I was at home. My parents were busy teaching about the Bible. I, there's no balance there. So I've got to make sure. Okay, so I, so that's the reason now the schedule will come out. Okay, so I know. Okay, so eventually, if this uh, these are the three weeks I'm teaching, so I need to balance it up. So I need to you know make sure that I take them out, take the kids out, take the go out on family. Make sure that happens because I know that if June starts, there's no way we can go anywhere because school starts. Right? So just being very practical and thinking and planning ahead when it comes to maintaining worship, work, and rest. What about rest? Right? Some of the things I personally, this is what I personally do, right? So after church, after I come home, I do two things, eat and sleep. That's it, right? I just rest. I may not like sleep like the whole evening, but I just rest. 
probably play some songs and just rest my mind, rest my body, right? And what happens is that you're regenerated, you gain strength, right? You feel, okay, I'm, I'm ready for a Monday. I'm ready for the week to start, right? And you need to feel that, right? Uh, so there will be those times of you know, constantly doing something when it comes to work, but maintain a rhythm. If you feel that, okay, one week or two weeks, you have to really put in hard work, extra work, do it, but also understand that, okay, I can you know, take a couple of days off, just stay at home, just rest. So what are you doing? You're balancing your life out. Right? It's not like your whole life is surrounded with only work. Right? Uh, in your free time, if you'd like to learn an instrument, if you're playing an instrument, uh, spending time with your family, all of this is will help you right, to, to really get regenerated in your life. Be committed to what is important. Now, Mark 12, 29 to 31, anyone can read? Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Mark 11, 12, 29 to th Jesus said, the first is, the first is importance is listen. Listen, Israel. The Lord your God is one. So love the Lord God with all your passion and prayer and intelligence and energy. And here is a second. Love others as well as you love yourself. There is no other commandment that ranks with these. Right. Yo, look at this. Jesus said, the first is importance. Listen, Israel. The Lord your God is one. So it's very important to understand and know what is important to you. So if I give you a paper and a pen and I say, write down what is important to you. What is the most important thing in your life? Maybe some of us may write my parents. Some of us may write my brother, my sister. Some of us may write my work. Some of us may say ministry. We have many, uh, many things that are important to us. Right? Some of us may say career. And I know of people who have who have nothing else in no other goal but to become to do well in life to work hard get a good job and do well and some of my friends they said you know i know of they have one goal in life work hard build a house and make my parents and my parents should stay in that house good right nothing wrong in it right but here matthew 6 33 seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all the other things will be added to you. So when we say know what, what is important to you, have a true value scale. Right? It doesn't mean the other things in life is not important. Right? A house is important, yes or no? Right? Working is important. Money is needed. Transportation is needed. Everything is important. But have a value scale. If I do this, if I give importance to which brand of clothes I wear or how many cars I have or what, how to build my house, if my value is of that is higher than who God is, then I've got it wrong. Matthew 6.33 is very simple. Seek first the kingdom of God. All the other things will be added to you. Now, it doesn't mean that I only, here's the flip side, right? I only sit and pray and say, God, I'm seeking your kingdom, so you will add everything into me, for me. You will add money into my account. You will you know, provide for me. You will provide for my uh, family. You will provide for my children. doesn't mean that works that way, right? Understand, have a value scale. Is this important? To have right now what is more important is you know many times when i when i became a believer i saw i had such a wrong understanding you know always thought okay you pray i love to do that so i could spend hours in prayer but i realized that hey i'm only praying but i'm not doing anything i'm not working i'm not supporting my family and I'm 21, 22 years old. I'm supposed to be working. Right? And how long can I do this? 
is praying important seeking god's kingdom first is important very important but i can't just stay at home and do that and forget about the things that i have to get done i knew that hey i have to work i've got a, i've got my parents even though i was not married i i needed i needed to provide for them because they have provided for me so i had to make sure i had to step out now it was very hard for me so for almost one and a half years i was at home i was not working what was i doing praying i made up my mind okay if you look at the bible if you look at the scriptures god designed work and the apostle paul said if you don't work don't eat every time i used to take the food i used to think oh man what is this i decided i had to step out i remember the first i think the first week of working see all the while you're at home you know but the first week of working you're in this office you have to stick by the rules it was very difficult for me but i understood that we have to get it done right so have a true value scale god is this something that i need now is this a priority that i have right now is it something that i should you know spend time on or should i wait for some time right should i wait for 2 years right and the and the word of god will minister to you give you guidance right here look at the story of two sisters mary and martha who visited jesus one day we know the story right uh, okay let's read uh, this portion luke 10:38 to 42 <laughs> go ahead luke 10:38 to 42 as they continued their travel jesus entered a village a woman by name of martha welcomed him and made him feel quiet at home she had a sister Mary, who sat before the master, hanging on every word he said. But Martha was pulled away by all she had to do in the kitchen. Later she stepped in, interrupting them. Master, don't you care that my sister has abandoned, abandoned the kitchen to me? Tell her to lend me a hand. The master said, Martha, dear Martha, you are fussing far too much and getting yourself walked up over nothing. One thing only is essential, and Mary has chosen it. It's the main cause and won't be taken from her. Yeah. Two sisters, both of them had different views, but both were not wrong. Right? Martha, uh, so these two sisters, so who, yeah, Martha is the one who said, okay, Jesus is coming. She thought in a way that, okay, let me go to the kitchen. The great man of God is coming. Jesus is coming, the Messiah. So let me get things done for him. When he comes, I can give him a good meal. Is it wrong? Not at all wrong. But Mary decided the other way. I don't care what we're going to give him. For me, Jesus is coming. Now he's not going to, he doesn't have time. He's not going to come every time. This is just this moment that I have, and I am not going to waste my time in the kitchen. I want to be at his feet because once he comes, he may stay for two hours, he'll go, and he may not come for the next two years. Jesus was a busy man. So here Mary is chosen to sit at Jesus' feet. Right? Now, again, it's the principle that we must take. Right? Mary valued the person of Jesus Christ. He said, no, I, I, I need to be with Jesus. I need to be with him because I cannot get this opportunity again. I, will, I may not get it again. But Martha looked at the other side and said, now I need to provide for this. Him. I need to make him feel comfortable. Both are good, but the principle is first being in the presence of God was of higher value than the other things, right? And even in our life, right? God, look at this. It says here three main institutions in the scripture, right? God, sorry, three main institutions ordained by God, the family, the church, and the government. 
the institution of family is foundational, meaning focus on your family, place family on higher value than work. What is more important, family or work? You know, especially when we are growing up, right? When we are youth, we always think that work is more important. But then reality hits in. Family is so much more important. Life is so much more important. You know, work will come and go. We can get many other works. We can earn. All of that is there. Right? It's not like we're disrespecting work. Work is given by God. But family is ordained by God. If I have to look after my family, if there are things that I have to sacrifice at work, I better sacrifice it at work. Because family is of more importance than work. It's higher, right? And, and when you look at, especially the scriptures, right, all through the Old Testament, we see God, especially in Exodus, Deuteronomy, God placing higher value on work, sorry, on, on family, right? Choose this day whom you're going to serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Family is ordained by God. So, you know, sometimes we may get upset and, you know, with our parents, it's a normal thing. We get upset with our parents. We get upset with our family members. Get over it. Life is bigger than all of this. Don't hold on to these. You know, Your parents may have said something to you and you got upset now. You're not talking to them. It's of no use. Get over it. Forgive them. Move on in life. They may not forgive you, but as parents, I'm sure they will forgive you. Right? Don't hold on to these grudges. Don't hold on to... Uh, you know, saying, okay, no, because you said this, because you said that. Many a times I, I, I meet people who, it's very strange that brothers have not spoken to each other for 15, 20 years. Children, the, 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 you know, the children have not spoken to the parents for 15, 20 years. Why? Maybe something about the property or maybe because, the, you know, the parents didn't agree for some marriage or something which is... You know, not when of it's because of our pride that we hold on to it. Let go, right? Let go of it. You know, one day we're all going to pass on, and it's better to have lived together as a family, loving each other, caring for each other, rather than in the end looking back and saying, "I wish I had forgiven him. I wish I had." mended things right so always honor family uh, place higher family uh, higher value on family adjust your schedule uh, to accommodate what is valuable what is less valuable right so there are times when i remember i've uh, i've taken you know leaves and the whole day I've with, i was with the kids all day play football, play carom board, play all these indoor games with them the whole day. But you, you missed work. You missed uh, going to office. That too, you're in ministry. That's OK. It was good because family is important. There'll come a time when the kids won't have time for you. And every time I talk to you know people who have teens, Teens meaning they're 15, 16, they're not going to stand with you and every time say, come, please play with me. Over oh, the time is that time is gone. They'll have friends, they'll move on. And then we can't look back and say, Oh, but you when you were seven years old, when you were eight years old, you were always asking me to play. Time has moved on. The time is never going to come back again. Right? So keep important things important. Money is important, success is important, profession is important, but God is much more important. Relationships are much more important. Life is much more important than all of that. You can have money and no family is of no use. It's not going to you know, fulfill your desires at all. <clears throat> so refuse to compromise. There will be times you'll have to make tough choices. Don't be afraid to say no. Set boundaries on being always con uh, connected. Uh, switch off your smartphone. Stop checking emails. 
disengaged with social media and other distractions. Now, just because we are at home, right? It shouldn't be like I have one phone here and my my family, everyone are around. It's of no use. Right? And I was I was mentioning this to the first year's last class. I was saying, I don't have I don't know if I have a Facebook account or I don't have Instagram. I don't have anything. Now, all of this is important. We need it. I don't have it. Uh, because I, I don't even know how to use it. And I don't want to know how to use it. It doesn't interest me at all. Right? Uh, sometimes I get these, uh, they're saying, you know, I don't even watch my own videos or the daily devotion and all of that. I don't watch it. Sometimes I watch it, but and then I get these messages, for, oh, thank you for sharing this. So it's, it encourages us, but I don't keep looking at that and say, oh, this person said this. I don't have time for all of that. Right? We, it's very important to set aside all of this. Now, gadgets, phones, tabs, all of this is important. I have all of them. I don't. They don't control me in any way. How many of you wake up in the morning and the first thing we do is check how many messages we got? Nine out of 10. Yes? The only time when I wake up is to put off the alarm. And I don't think about it after that. Right? Uh, disengage. At times, you just need to say, OK, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to get into this whole digital distractions that are available. It's not only distractions. It's important, right? Now, as, as in ministry, we have WhatsApp. And we communicate a lot through WhatsApp. It's just easier. It's faster. Uh, and we communicate a lot through WhatsApp. But it's not like every five minutes I'm checking who messaged me, who's messaging in the group. Uh, set times have a control over the way you use your uh your uh, gadgets and your smartphones family time set aside time enjoy these moments take time for the simple but these simple things will have lasting memories on your children how many of you when you were small you were you know you you, you were small and your parents took you out uh, probably to a park or for a picnic how many of you remember it? All of us remember it. Why? It's years back, you know, or maybe what? Long time back, right? But why, why do you remember it? Sorry? Those memories. Those memories last. And when you, you know, the, the memories of you being in Bible college also will last. I've shared, you know, uh, every time I. You know, I was, I was just talking to some of them. The table there is the same table we sat and ate dinner when lunch and dinner, everything. The same table. And I, every, I, you know, when I sit there and I look at the table, I think, oh man, I, 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 we used to sit on that table. That was in the boys' hostel. Same table. Right? And we used to sit and eat there. And I used to remember spending hours on those same, on that same chair, same table, reading and writing. You know, God's word, studying God's word, hours on the table and, and I remember it it's memories and, and when we spend time with our family when we spend time uh, with our relatives and uh, when it's family it is something that will last it will last it's memories that stay you may not remember how many sermons you preached or how you prepared a sermon but you'll remember this so create good memories right? so that your children can talk about it some of you may say, hey, I'm not even married yet. Eventually, you'll get married, you'll have children, and then create memories for them. right? And it's important that we do that. Because have meals together, be involved in your children's studies, take regular vacations, pray together regularly as a family, attend church together as a family. right? Have time not only for discipline, but also have time for fun. right? So all of these things will, you know, just... Just make them feel so important. You know, right now, uh, you know, my children are learning how to play a top. You know the top, that little toy where you spin the top yeah, with the tread. So I'm playing with them. Say, so, hey, it's not coming for me. 
and my son says hey dada you're not tying it properly you know you need to tie it this way <laughs> and he's mastered the art of uh, doing that it's a simple game just but i'm spending time with them right it's just bringing so much value for him dada is not sitting on the laptop but he's sitting and he's playing with me it adds so much value to him what is it it's a very simple game right and and for him it's a very big thing so you create these memories for them right keep short, short accounts which is checks and balances mark chapter 6 30 to 32 let's read mark chapter 6 verse 30 and 32 the apostles returned and met with jesus and told him all they have done and taught there were so many people coming and going that jesus and his disciples didn't even have time to eat so he said to them let us go off by ourselves to some place where we will be alone you can rest a while so they started out in a boat by themselves to a lonely place yeah so just just picture this these three words these two verses right the apostles returned and met with jesus and told him all they had done and taught remember jesus sent the 12 of them go and you do what whatever i did you go and do so now they've come back they're fully excited they're saying jesus uh you know whatever you told us to teach we have taught and we saw miracles but there was a problem verse 31 there were so many people coming and going that jesus and his disciples didn't even have time to eat so can you picture jesus he's seeing the disciples disciples are talking but there are people here crowding coming to jesus and maybe he felt hey i need to my disciples 12 of them they've come back from you know they want to share something with me but i'm not i don't even have the time here because everyone here there's a line of people here i don't even have time to eat but what did he say so he said to them let us go off by ourselves to some place where we will be alone and you can rest a while what a beautiful sentence that is it was like jesus placing so much importance on the 12 he didn't say okay you finished your work okay come and sit and see what what else i'm going to do now he valued them he said okay we we can't do this here too many people i know you want to share all that has happened uh, jesus didn't say i know all this will happen i'm all knowing i know everything no. okay wait for some time let's go let's go off by ourselves so there i know you're even tired so you can rest you can take time you can share everything that god has done and you uh, when you all went on the ministry right so we see that jesus was a very busy man he got his disciples to be busy but he also made sure that he set aside time to be with the disciples he set aside time to you know over these extended periods he set aside time he said okay enough let's go off to the mountains let's go alone and we'll spend time together you and i must also be able to keep a check right so for example there'll be two weeks you have a lot of work do the work but take the next maybe 3 4 days take some time alone rest spend time alone spend time in in with your family spend time with your friends do things that you feel comforted you know sometimes people uh, you know they they just like to play an instrument and it brings rest to them right sometimes people like to write oh, there's a girl little girl in our church oh, i was talking to her the other day she's probably about 8 or 9 years old i said what do you like to do in your free time she said i like reading books i was so surprised because she said i feel peace when i read books so she keeps reading books even in the break time she's reading books wherever she goes she has a book so that's her way of de-stressing out or to feel relaxed so we all have different ways of relaxing find your way and do it as long as it is not you know as long as it's in line with god's word as long as it's not going away from god make sure that you uh so next one guard your resources your time your energy and money Ephesians 5 15 through 17 So be careful how you live 
don't live like ignorant ignorant people but like wise people make good use of every opportunity you have because these are evil days don't be fools then but try to find out what the lord wants to you you to do guard your resources your time your energy your money meaning what learn to manage these three in a very profitable way we all have 24 hours we all have a certain amount of energy we have we all have a certain amount of money that we have to guard and and use look at the lord jesus he was a great teacher wonderful teacher they called him rabbi have you ever wondered why they called him rabbi he never went to the school he never studied under the uh, you know the prophets and the pharisees but they called him rabbi because he was great he was a wonderful teacher right he avoided getting into meaningless arguments right he remember i think in the book of john the disciples come to jesus and say okay jesus Moses did a lot of miracles, so now you do some miracles so that we can see you. What did Jesus say? He said, no, I'm not going to perform any miracles. He just moved off from that place. But could he have done it? Yes. But he didn't. He chose not to do it. Right? Because they were coming to him for the miracles. And he chose not to do it. And in, in his trial, he let things happen like remember when uh, Pilate said asked him are you the messiah before that the pharisees and the sadducees were asking he didn't bother to respond many places he just gave one word answer he, he knew he let his himself know when to speak when not to speak right and so guarding your time energy and money could also especially time and energy goes when we talk unwanted things Look at this. Things that can be energy leaks. Not minding your own business. Paul writes and he says, mind your own business. Right? Getting involved in things that other people should be doing. Why is he doing that? Why is she doing this? You know, why is this church doing that? Why is that preacher saying this? Why is my neighbor doing this? What are you about all of that? That's all a waste of time. These are all energy leaks. It just drains you out. Right? Focus on what you want to do. Focus on you know you spending time with God, you building yourself up. Right? Uh, and I remember a great a big energy leak for me was you know, when I was in first year in Bible college, I was really drained out. Because I was, it was like I was looking after all the students. So did you do this? Did you do that? Did you pray? Did you do this? By the time the, I said, this is, this is, I'm not a kindergarten teacher. I can't do this. And I very clearly remember, I said, I'm not going to do this. I thank God that I chose this. I chose to step away from you. Because, of course, I wanted to help my my classmates and all of that but it became an energy drainer i would come to bible college i would be tired oh man look at did they even do this they didn't clean the place they didn't do this and i started to tell myself okay don't overreact and start focusing on what you want to do right uh stay calm when things don't go your way there are distractions browsing chatting texting you know, texting and chatting may be there, which is when it's necessary. If you have to avoid it, just avoid it. It can be an energy leak. Investing resources into the un unprofitable, meaning spending time gossiping, listening to workplace gossip. Oh, imagine listening to half an hour of gossip from somebody. It just feel drained out. And many times I have walked out. Hey, what happened? I don't have time to listen to. Oh, so you, you're you very big. Huh? You don't have time to listen to gossip. Yeah, I don't have time. Because I don't want to 
listen to these things and then put it into my spirit and then I keep thinking about it, pondering about it. No, let it go. If, if there's gossip happening, take a left, take a right, get out of that place. But what will they feel? What will they think? There'll come a time when you will forget about what people will think. You will do what you feel is right in the eyes of God. Right? Overcrowding your life with unnecessary activity or with activity that can easily be delegated. Right? Don't overcrowd your life. So I remember uh, uh, this happened, right, where uh, the kids were playing and they would throw all their toys. And at the end of the day, I was sitting and cleaning it up. And I realized, hey, I need to teach them. Because I've already got so many things to do. I can't be sitting and doing this. So I said, OK, come in. You will have to do this. You take your toys, put it in the toy box, and keep it away. Whenever you play, you keep it back. So from now on, I'm not going to do it. You have to do it. Very simple thing. So in the workplace, if you feel that you're doing you know, you know, even the small things, if you can delegate, delegate. Right? Give it to people. Stay focused. Uh, stay in the center of God plan, God's plan. Uh, do, not, do not take on things that God does not want you to be doing. Very important. Do not take on things God does not want you to be doing. If there are things, there's a time and a season for everything. You can prepare for, for what is ahead. But don't take it up upon yourself and say, okay, I have to do this now. Unless you have a clear leading from God. Right? The right time, God will open the right doors. Develop personal efficiency, productivity, and time saving skills. Now, I'll just briefly share on these three. Personal efficiency, improve your skills. Productivity, learn to use those skills in the right way to improve the, the, the quality and essence of your work. Time saving skills. Now, with all that we have around us, we have AI, uh, a, a, a PPT that can that normally takes half an hour, can be done in five minutes and can be done really well. An email which takes 20 minutes, for you to you know just think about, about what you want to write it may be a long email but you just you know just say what you want to get and ai does it copy paste do some tweaks send the email you don't have to waste too much time on all of it so use all of it to improve yourself regenerate yourself right again uh, take time to the word regenerate is to refresh yourself Keep yourself refreshed every now and then. Whatever you feel like doing. Right now, I know that in Bible college, you'll be constantly, whole day, listening to uh, you know, teachings and then getting into worship. Regenerate yourself. Right? In the sense, if you feel you want to do something, get permission, try and do it. You've got a lot of plays, play a sport, uh, play some instruments. Whatever you feel like doing, do it to regenerate yourself. Stop demonic disruptions and delays. Remember, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. Right? So the enemy has ways and tactics of stealing your time, resources, your energy, and your money. He has ways. A task that is normally takes 10 minutes, you're taking one and a half hours for that. Uh, this, this, you can say, okay, God, give me the wisdom to for me to do this simple task. Help me to get it done. Give me the wisdom. Remove every disruption. Every now, these disruptions could be just different thoughts coming to the mind, uh, or just things that are not working, or you feel uneasy in your spirit. Right? Uh, just. Stop those. Stop demonic dis disruptions and delays. Now, there are times you will have to stand bold and tell the storms that arise to cease. So, again, these demonic disruptions can be very simple, very small, but you know it's a disruption. You know, many times I've been uh, preparing either for Bible college or preparing for a Sunday sermon. It's a simple sermon. We just need probably one and a half hours or two hours to prepare. But there are times it's been four or five hours. 
I've not been, I've not done, I'm not completed with it. Why? Because I'm doing, I'm thinking of something here. I'm thinking of, oh, there's an email that I have to send. There's an SMS that has come in. I have to pray for this person. Oh, I have to go, you know, get these things done. I have to go to the shop and get this done. So there's all these disruptions that are coming. And what normally takes one and a half hours or two hours has taken four to five hours. Right? So again, it comes to my next point, plan ahead. Ecclesiastes 3 1 to everything that is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Develop a daily plan. Do you have a daily plan? I think most Bible college students have a daily plan. You have a monthly, weekly plan, right? Especially when you're beginning to work, right? Uh, your appointments, your tasks for the week, develop a plan. Then you can develop even a monthly plan. Right, uh, going ahead. Okay, for this month, what am I going to do? And in it, and then you can go into an annual plan. And then, if you want to really build on this, you can also do a, a three-year plan, a five-year plan. Right, nothing wrong. Right, uh, I've got plans. I've written that I've written down that. Okay, by the age of forty, I should have achieved all of this. So I've got a good three years more. So. Okay, I should have achieved all this, right? And 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 so you can develop those plans, right? Three years, five years, work on it, and you keep, you know. Now that we all have, uh, we can use our phones even to do this. So uh, keep imp improvising, keep improving, keep adding things, keep removing, uh, but and be open to the work of the Holy Spirit as you plan. But it's very important to plan and keep it tight. Meaning you you work ahead to to that, right? Are you understanding? Right? You you make the plan. If it's small plans, weekly or biweekly plan, monthly plan, stick to that plan, so that when you make bigger plans, yearly plans, uh, you'll be able to stay the course, right? Uh, okay. Take a friendly approach to business. Okay, when it comes to business, when it comes to work. Uh, take a friendly approach, meaning if you are, you know, you, you know, example, you have a business, you, you're recruiting people into your organization, have a friendly approach, be flexible uh, uh, with people in their work. So I won't go too much into this. Uh, but this is, this is, you know, most, mostly what I wanted to share this morning. Uh, it's very important, right, that we, Balance our life. Three aspects. Balance our family, our work, and God. Right? God, family, and work. Very important. Balance them out. Learn how to, okay, I'm doing this 21 days of fasting and prayer. Okay, after that, I want to make sure that I spend more time with my family. Or if I'm working, Traveling on work for a long time. Okay, I need to make sure that I also spend time with God. I also have time to spend with family. Right? And as you grow and mature in the Lord, you will understand. Right? Even I, as I'm learning and growing, uh, we'll begin to understand. Okay, is this priority or not? Should I do this now or not? Right? And of course, we've got the Holy Spirit who will lead us and guide us and give us the right step to take. But we must think about it, and we must pray about it, right? And God will lead us in the right way, right? All right, so uh, we'll stop here. Uh, for those of you uh, online who hasn't seen the, the message on the chat, um, uh, this will be the only class. We won't have the second session, but please use this uh, time uh, to probably uh, you know, read and uh, prepare yourself or you can read anything from your notes. Uh, uh, use this time fruitfully, right? Okay, we'll meet next Monday, and next Monday we'll should quite, should be able to cover most of uh, the remaining portions of the course. Right. Thank you so much. Have a great week ahead. God bless you all.